he is the good shepherd. And he is faithful to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's sing it together. Uh, yeah, I, I remember when I, because uh, I'm actually from California, and 
I've been out here about like, 16 years. And you know, when I first came out here,
this morning. The, uh, we'll let you know about choir practice tonight. Uh, Tina is uh, not here this morning. She has, uh, she's sick, uh, not the coronavirus, but she's, she's sick, so uh, we may not have uh, choir practice this evening and uh, not have Sunday night service tonight. And then uh, Women's Ministry Day will be next Sunday, the 22nd. We've got our ushers listed for this and next week. Happy birthday uh, to Jane. And happy anniversary to Bob and Betty. And we pray God's blessing upon each of them. And as, as Janie makes it, uh, makes it known each year that she's been alive as long as Bob and Betty have been married. And uh, so if you don't have, she doesn't have to tell her age, you just have to tell what, which anniversary it is for Bob and Ben. Um, our next song is a statement of faith in the midst of adversity, in the midst of uncertainty, we can know that God is in control. Amen. So let's uh, stand again and, and sing number 373, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow.
to the front. Uh, we were able to go over to Riverside. Uh, Terry got down here the other day, uh, yesterday. Uh, boy was 30 years old and got pitched. Uh, they're in the process of trying to do <coughs> stem cell treatment, so they had a benefit for him yesterday. And uh, I know his mom, we were talking to his mom a little bit yesterday. And we saw her like, Again, uh, we're going to start our prayer time with prayer for our country, as we've already done today. But uh, especially with this being uh, a national day of prayer, a lot for us to pray for our nation. And, and really, this all those affected around the world by our situation, and that God would be glorified in the midst of this. Yes, Deb. Um. I don't know if you, anybody's heard, but the college was going to ex extend their spring back break through next week, but they changed their mind and decided to send all the students home. So we've got lots of students who are having to come back and pick up their things because they've been gone for spring break. And, and it's a confusing time for everyone, but they're going to have to finish all their classes online. So pray for our faculty <laughs> and all of us there. So we're going to have to help them get through this and uh, be successful. I don't know if we're even going to have graduation yet. We have a, that decision has not been made. So we, we've just got less than a thousand students, but there's colleges across the nation that are doing the same thing and lots of trouble. Yeah. Let's come before the Lord together and be confident that he is in control, that we don't have to fear. Let's pray. Father, would you come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ today? Lord, you know all the affairs of man. Lord, you rule the nations and the hearts of those that, that love you. Lord, I thank you that there is nothing that is hidden from you. Lord, we pray that as we intercede on behalf of our nation today, Lord, if there's anything in our hearts, as, as Corey has mentioned uh, earlier, just a few minutes ago, Lord, if there's anything amiss, uh, any sin that we need to repent of and ask forgiveness for, may it be so now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we might be a kingdom of priests, holy and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Lord, we do lift this nation to you. Lord, I pray your blessings upon us. Help us, Lord. Forgive our sin. Lord, and heal our land. Lord, we pray for those that are uh, actively involved in, in uh, the preparation and, and uh, response to this, this latest virus. Lord, I pray that you will direct them, give them success. Lord, for those that are isolated, may they sense your presence in a very real way, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that you will visit them and assure them that you are for them, that you are with them. Lord, we pray for our leaders in each uh, area, in the healthcare field, in the political realm, uh, in the military, Lord, in the educational uh, arena. Lord, and uh, those that are involved in the local level, Lord, I pray your blessings on each of them. Lord Jesus, and again, we ask that you would be lifted up in the midst of this. Lord, as they lifted up the serpent there, as Moses declared by your word, and they looked upon it and lived, Lord, may people look to you in this time of uncertainty, in this time of, of, uh, of just uh, anxiety and fear. May people see that you are our rock. 
In Jesus' name we ask you, Father. Lord, we pray for these that are in the bulletin. Lord, we mention them by name. Lord, we pray your blessings on each of them. Touch and heal and strengthen those that are sick. Lord, I pray for those that are grieving. Lord, we pray for the Higgins family, that you would bless them. Lord, I pray for the Simon family, that you would bless them. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray for uh, those that are uh, that would want to be here. Those that are uh, watching us on Facebook Live, Lord, I pray your blessing on each of them. Lord, may you visit them where they are and uh, just uh, surround them by your presence. Meet their needs, I pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of worship that you have fitted us to sing along with the redeemed of the Lord that are above with the angels in heaven. Lord, we join together with them and we say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We worship you today, Lord, and we thank you, not only for hearing our prayers, but we pray for these spoken requests, Lord, that have been uh, made it known to us, Lord, those that are that are hurting, those that are weary, those that are sick. Lord, I pray that you will touch each one, meet their needs, provide for them. Pray for this uh, young man who's having these stem cell treatments ahead. Lord, I pray that you would bless him. May they be effective. Lord, and may his financial needs be met as well. Father, we pray for those around the world that are suffering today. Some in far worse situations than in this country. For your blessings upon them. Those that have been stranded, those that are in uh, uh, quarantine, bless the Lord and uh, may their needs be met as well. Lord, I pray for those that are involved in food distribution uh, to the shut ins and the quarantine. Bless them and I just pray that they would be uh, servants in your hand as they distribute the food to those that are in need. Give us peace, I pray. In Jesus' name we ask you. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 That's right. Uh, I promised Chloe before we started this morning that we were going to do a couple of songs, uh, especially for her. And so y'all going to have to help me. Y'all don't have to stand up, but I'm going to get my guitar. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me and Do Lord together. But y'all have to clap on Do Lord. That, that helps out. Car strap accident. Y'all ready? First, we're going to do Do Lord, okay?
Jesus loves me, this I know. about the church throughout the centuries is we have of necessity been adaptable to, due to changing circumstances technologically uh, in the healthcare field in the political realm in uh, all aspects we have to be adaptable and flexible to our changing world um, this is evident uh, with the, our use of the audiovisual system, with being on Facebook. We have to accommodate the changing world that we live in. The gospel never changes. Our Lord never changes. But we have to be able to communicate the gospel in ways that are effective and most uh, apt to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in a way that is um, easily understood and grasped by this current generation. One of the things that um, has been uh, very clear uh, as a result of a couple of things that I've uh, been exposed to in the last couple of weeks is that our current uh, communication uh, level and realm is largely visual and it's always been so uh, many times the Lord in communicating what did he use he used stories he told stories he gave parables and sometimes he used illustrations with people to show them the father by showing them himself by demonstrating in front of them wonderful teaching techniques and sometimes we have lost that and reverted back to the lecture model which has never been optimal and it's less uh, effective than ever in this current generation. With that said, I'm going to use a lot of lectures. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have, we do have some, uh, uh, Tanya, if you go ahead and put those up. What does that look like to you? Looks like a dove. That's good. It's got got an olive branch in his in his mouth, or what's supposed to be an olive branch, and uh, that is an indication and a sign of what? What does that mean? What's that represent? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and peace. That's good. But very good. And the next one. What does that spell? Come on, Colin. If you can read that, you're doing good. Peace. 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 And this morning. I'm going to talk about the peace that we enjoy as believers, as children of God. Um, I'm going to preface uh, the, before I go into the scripture. I would like to just share with you something that was eye-opening to me. I've, I've told a few of you already today. I had need to go by uh, Sam's this past week anyway. I just needed a few things. 
thank God I didn't need toilet paper or Kleenex because they were out. Um, but I went in, and this was uh, mid-morning, maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. The parking lot was full. There was, you had to wait on a parking lot, I mean, all the way out full. And uh, I got inside, and the, the, the store was full. And people were doing panic shopping. And the best way I know how to describe it, the way that the, the general sense that I that I saw in the store, I don't know if you've ever been around cattle when lightning hit nearby. And they, they haven't stampeded yet, but they've got that look in their eye like they're ready to go at any minute. That was the look that everybody had. I mean, that was, you could tell there was a general, it wasn't, a two anxiety, it was about seven anxiety. People were very anxious. And um, the lines were about 30, 30 to 40 people deep at each register. It was, um, it was an interesting situation. And I, I thought to myself, this is really getting people disturbed and anxious about our present situation because you, you can't see it you, you know you can't you don't know what to do everybody's buying toilet paper so i guess i must need some too <laughs> you know and, and we get into that uh kind of irrational response to a uh, un unknown situation with that in mind i thought it would benefit us uh together to to get some perspective on the extent and seriousness of our, our current situation, while we're doing things like we're doing them this morning. I was able to print out uh, something about pandemics. This has been designated a pandemic by the World Health Organization. And this is pandemics that changed history. Now this, I'm not saying this is not, but it, it has affected history. It's already affected history just this past couple of weeks. But if you look at what has happened through the centuries, it will help us get a perspective on where we are and how bad this is, because we tend to forget the things that happened before. In 430 BC, in Athens, Greece, uh, during the Peloponnesian War, uh, the disease was in, in Greece, Libya, Ethiopia, and Egypt. Across the Athenian walls as the Spartans laid siege, as much as two-thirds of the population died from that. Two-thirds of the population gone. Um, there was an Antonine plague in 165 AD. It was probably, they, they think it was probably the first or uh, early appearance of smallpox. Um, and it changed the course of the uh, uh, Roman Empire to an extent, and it continued for about 15 years, and Marcus Aurelius, uh, one of the well-known uh, Caesars and generals, um, was, was died of the Antonine Plague. You have the Cyprian Plague and the Justinian Plague, and this, this is interesting, in 541, you, you're familiar with uh, Justinian, uh, one of the early church fathers. The plague changed the course of the Roman Empire squelching Emperor Justinian's plans to bring the Roman Empire back together and causing a massive economic struggle. It's also credited with creating an apocalyptic atmosphere that spurred the rapid spread of Christianity. So out of a terrible situation, recurrences over the next two centuries eventually killed 50 million people, one-fourth or 26% of the world's population. And it was believed to be the first significant appearance of bubonic plague. Um, and then uh, they had an outbreak of leprosy in the 11th century. Um, they had a vast number of victims uh, that were affected by it. And then you, you may uh, be familiar with uh, what's called the Black Death, also the bubonic plague. And it was responsible for the death of one third of the world population. The, the uh, leaders of the day, many of the theologians of the day, really considered that this might be the end of the world. It was higher than one third in, in the uh, densely populated areas. Uh, they were, it was, it overwhelmed 
and system. And um, there was um, there was an account that I read of a priest back in the uh, in Europe in the Middle Ages during this. All he did for his ministry, I mean, for years and years, all he did was preach funerals every day, like four, five, six funerals every day. And um, but uh, it incapacitated uh, England and France. They were in the middle of a war, and so they had to call the war off. <laughs> they were so sick. The Columbian Exchange. That's what uh, what uh, is. Uh, what happened from the uh, European uh, uh, exploration of the United States, of America? Um, it was uh, devastating to the indigenous people, with as many as 90 percent dying, uh, both in North and South America. 90 percent of the native population of the of, uh, of America uh, died. Uh, through these, uh, these diseases, smallpox, measles, bubonic plague, they had no resistance and they, they just succumbed to it. And um, there throughout a couple of centuries. Uh, in 2019, it concluded that the deaths of some 56 million Native Americans in the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries may have altered, uh, may have had a role to play in altering the climate because uh, everything that they used to till, uh, the vegetation, grew up and uh, it drew more CO2 from the atmosphere and caused a cooling event. So instead of global warming, it caused global cooling. I don't know about that, but that's what uh, they have had some conjecture concerning. Also, you had the Great Plague of London. The second, uh, second recorded appearance, bubonic plague, led to the deaths of 20% of London's population. You got the cholera pandemic. In 1817, uh, killed 150,000 people in America. The third plague pandemic in 1855, it started in China. It claimed 15 million. Uh, the Fiji measles pandemic in 1875 killed one third of Fiji's population. And then the Russian flu, I know this is a little, but I, I want you to think about this is, this is stuff that has happened to us and we survived. It's pretty bad. Um, Spanish flu, 1918, you've probably heard about that. Um, that resulted in 50 million deaths um, that uh, started there in, in, the, in Europe. Uh, it may have been, uh, it started in China, but uh, <clears throat> went to Europe and then North America. And uh, a couple more, and I'm finished with this. Uh, the Asian flu, 1957. Um, 1957, 58, causing an estimated uh, estimated one over one million deaths globally, and 116,000 in the United States. And then AIDS uh, was first identified in '81. Uh, there were 35 million people have died as a as a result of AIDS worldwide uh, since '81. Um, and if y'all remember, I, I remember when AIDS first came out, people people didn't know what to do. They, they were very, very scared. And well, why, why are you spending time telling me about these things that happened centuries ago? Because we got through them. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we got through them, um, I'm not going to go into it in detail today, but I would tell you that in the Middle Ages, what is largely credited with stopping the Black Death is Scripture is the priest went back to the law of Moses and that's where the quarantine uh, idea is given. That's where the law is given. If somebody was sick, you isolated them, kept them away. They were unclean. They had to be isolated for uh, a period of time and so it, it limited the spread of disease and that is largely credited with stopping uh, the the spread of the Black Death. It was horrible enough as it was, but it, it aided greatly. And wasn't it wonderful that God's Word gave light as to how to deal with things? Amen. If you will turn with me uh, in, in, to, in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, 3.
Tank, if you go put the, put that uh, bell back up there, that'd be good. Thank you. Peace. Shalom. We're going to read the first few verses there together. Verses 1 through 4. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. We'll close our reading there at the end of the fourth verse of Isaiah chapter 26. You will keep him in perfect peace, him whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the reality of the peace of God that is upon us. Lord, may it sustain and strengthen us today as well as those around us and those in this nation. Lord, may we find that underneath all of the uncertainty, all of the anxiety, there is you. You are our rock. You are our shepherds. You are our great physician, our Lord, and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace. That sounds good. Um, we live in a, a day of high anxiety. A week of high anxiety. Everybody's worried. And with, with some understanding there. We've got the things to be worried about. Mama's not here today because she's in a high risk group. And I would sure hate to be responsible for uh, giving her a virus when I had no symptoms. I had no knowledge of me being sick. And that, that can happen. Um, but here we find the secret of perfect peace. Number one, is focus on Jesus, whose mind is stayed on the or and whose mind is steadfast. We have to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher, or the beginner and ender of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set at the right hand of the Father, as it tells us in Hebrews. And so we have to look at Jesus as our example. A um, couple of things about Christ in this uh, particular setting uh, that we're in today. Jesus did not isolate himself from others. Jesus touched people that were lepers. He healed people that were diseased, that were blind, that were lame, that were shunned an outcast. So Jesus reached out to them. And how do we work that out with what we know about hygiene and, and, and things today? I think we have to be compassionate. We have to be willing to open up to people and not be afraid of people. We have to take precaution to be sure. But neither do we have to be living in fear all the time. Jesus was not afraid. Jesus didn't live in fear. Even when the disciples were afraid that they were going to be swamped and, and sink there in the Sea of Galilee, Jesus was not afraid. So we need to understand that why was Jesus not afraid? He was in the hands of his Heavenly Father. He understood that. He was not afraid because of his circumstances. And we can live in the midst of difficult circumstances, whether they be viral 
or economic or personal, we can live in the midst of them in confidence and in strength because our faith is in a risen Savior who has conquered this world. He has overcome the world. Our focus must be on Jesus, not on our present circumstances because they will change. You know, I'm convinced that um, in, a, in a historical setting, what we're in now, it's not the worst thing ever, and there's going to be worse stuff down the road. You know, the scripture's pretty clear uh, that there, there are some pretty bad things coming for the world uh, during the apocalypse. And so um, we need to understand that, that because, of, because of a few things that are different now than ever before, the ease of international travel, the, the, the way that uh, we, can, we, we can get out ahead of our information. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's no lag anymore. Uh, you can, that virus can travel 500 miles an hour on, on a jet and has. And so we, we, we're, it's more easily distributed worldwide than ever before. So we have to understand the world that we live in and adjust to that. But we can't let our circumstances cause us undue anxiety. We, we realize that we're going to have to uh, figure this thing out. And I did, I did uh, hear a, a physician say, you know, one of, the, one of the good things about our situation today is that there's going to be a lot less other diseases communicated uh, as a result of the precautions that are being taken for this. Some of them worse. Than this, and so that is an actual good thing that can come out of this, uh, our present situation. And then, not only do we focus on Jesus, not our present circumstances, but we have to continue to follow Him. We have to daily take up our cross and follow Jesus. Follow Him. Let Him be our guide. Let Him be our keeper. Let Him be our shepherd. Let Him take us through all the way through this thing. Secondly, our thoughts are important. Now we'll keep him in perfect peace. Him whose mind is steadfast. Your thoughts are important. They affect how you see things. They affect how you react to things. And your thought life really drives you. What, how you perceive the world how you see people, how you see yourself. Those are vital things. And so our thought life must be uh, kept under control. Um, you may not be like this, but I have, a, I have a great blessing. And when it comes time for me to go to sleep, I just turn my mind. It doesn't take much to turn my mind off like a switch. And I don't have, you know, I just, I'm gone, you know. I don't. I don't Stuff doesn't keep me up at night. I don't roll it over in my mind over and over and over and, and let it ruin my, ruin my sleep. I just I just turn it off and go to sleep. Um, and I, 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 I just, I thank God for that because some people can't do that. Some people just, they can't, they can't turn it off. But uh, Paul talked about bringing his body into submission. And we have to do that or attempt to do that with our thought life. We have to keep our thought life focused and disciplined by the grace of God. So don't let your mind run you off in the ditch somewhere and uh, and, and get get snowballing about what could happen and how things how bad things are and what you know worry about stuff that may never happen. Don't don't allow the enemy to beat you up like that. Because uh, as, as Dwayne said earlier this morning, fear is a tough taskmaster. It will wear you out. So we don't have to be motivated and driven and controlled by fear uh, in our thought life. Jesus told us that his word, thy word, is truth. Lord, sanctify them. Make them holy. Clean them by your truth. Thy word is truth. And we need to keep the word of God and his promises foremost in our thinking and in our heart. They will give you strength. 
I can't tell you how many times I have I have looked at the scripture and, and had the had a word of God just strengthen me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you. If God be for us, who can be against us? I am the Lord that heals you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Jesus still speaks. He still strengthens. He still heals. He still sustains. He's faithful. So let his word sustain you. And this morning, I think it is wonderful that as we're, as we're doing our very first live Facebook feed, guess what the, the phone is resting on? Resting on the word of God. That's the platform. That's our lives. We have to be founded upon his word together. Amen. And that is unshakable. It will not change. And it will sustain you. And you can stake your eternal destiny on his word, mm -hmm. on his promises. He will keep you. Third, believe God. Believe God. Believe God to be faithful. This outbreak is no surprise to him. He has perfect foreknowledge, foresight, and he is faithful in the midst of adversity. He is faithful in the midst of uncertainty. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. Okay, y'all help me preach and then we'll, we'll go on. Say it with me. God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen? I believe it. He is faithful and I pray that in this coming week, that people that are afraid, people that are fearful, will be able to see the peace of God upon you and know that something is different about your spirit. There's something different about them. They're not afraid like I am. I wonder what it is. And that Christ can be glorified in the reality of the peace that he has with us and given for us and that sustains us. So believe God for faithfulness and believe God to bring glory out of your life in this situation. Also believe God for sustenance and provision. Amen? Um, you know, I don't... I think I understand a little bit, but I think a lot of it's just, just mass hysteria, the whole toilet paper thing. You know, really. And it, it helps me to to look back and say, you know what, they hadn't even had toilet paper that many years. You know, it hadn't existed. We got along fine. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, that's that's if 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 toilet paper doesn't ever come back, we're gonna be okay. You know, it's just not the end of the world. Amen? It's not worth getting in fights over. So everybody just step back and calm down and kind of let the, let the hysteria pass you by and realize that he's our sustainer. Jesus made it very clear. I'm the one that dresses the ladies of the field, the father that takes care of them, gives them clothes to wear that surpasses anything that Solomon had. God is the one that feeds the sparrows. Sparrows don't worry about what they're going to eat. They just get up in the morning and they sing their beautiful song and they go root around and find them because the Lord's provided it for them. And the Lord's going to provide for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's going to provide for us. He's going to provide your daily needs. Why? Because He promised you. And if He has to rain down manna from heaven, He will. Amen? He's done it before. Believe God for today and tomorrow. We don't have to worry. Jesus said, don't worry about the future. Don't let that be such a, a, a focus for you of anxiety and fear. He said, don't, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't let it drive you. Don't let it become the focal point of your existence. Believe God the same God that will keep me alive and sustain me and protect me and provide for me today, he's going to see for me tomorrow. He's going to meet my needs tomorrow. Mm 
Amen. He's faithful. He is good. He's going to take care of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cole. I want to share with you a couple of things from our Lord Jesus there in the Gospel of John. I'll share these with you this morning. They've been an encouragement to me. Speaking with his disciples just prior to his death, there in the upper room discourse, Jesus spoke these words to them. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's the word of our Lord Jesus. His peace is upon us. Amen. Amen. And it's a gift. He gives us that peace. And then in John 16, 33. We have this promise of the Lord. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. Our peace is found in him. In his life, in his death, in his resurrection, he has overcome all the things of this world. And we can rest assured that he's going to carry us through whatever our circumstances may be. There's a wonderful word of encouragement that is contained in Hebrews chapter 13. It's the benediction there, beginning with the 20th verse. I would like for us to look at that together as we close. The 20 and 21st verses read as follows. I'm going to conclude the sermon this morning with giving this benediction. Hear the word of the Lord and receive the blessing of the Lord today. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the peace of God, which is upon us. Lord, that we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but we have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Lord, I pray your peace upon not only those gathered here today, those that are watching us as we stream live on Facebook, for those in this community, this state, and our nation, even around the world today, Lord, may people find you faithful who promised. Lord, may they cast their cares upon you knowing that you care for us. And may your peace flood this country. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Lord, be lifted up in our lives. Give us opportunity to testify to your goodness this week. Lord, uh, guide us by your spirit. Lord, guide our feet in paths of righteousness. Lord, I pray that your light would be seen and give us clarity as to guiding our steps, our thoughts, and our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you today. Uh, we're going to uh, conclude our, our service at this time. And uh, I don't know if we're going to... Uh, we can sing... Uh,